Okay, other questions? Adrian Seckham, I'm the Secretary of the Information Security oh, Panel. You're way of, in the back, okay. Of yes. the IT company. Got it. You were very clear on people's responsibility of declaring they want to have something remembered. What's your position on the right of people not to be remembered? Ah. Well, I would like to argue that some people may wish to be remembered, uh, and, and maybe you should even have the right to be remembered. So that's one side of the equation. The other one is interesting, and I accept the, the notion that some people might wish for certain things about them not to be remembered anymore. Of course, the problem is that they may have gotten onto the World Wide Web somehow, or maybe it's in somebody's library. Now we get into this very peculiar thing where the medium permits certain things to happen which would not have been permitted in other media. Example, uh, Amazon makes a product called Kindle, and they distributed a copy of a work. Uh, people purchased that copy in digital form, and not long after they had begun the distribution of this work, they discovered they did not actually have the rights to distribute the digital versions of the work. And so Amazon reached out through the Kindle system and pulled the work off the Kindles. Of course, this happened to have been George Orwell's 1984. <laughs> and I remember, I remember sending a note to Jeff Bezos saying, you know, Jeff, that was a really bad move, <laughs> especially that particular work. And he says, yeah, we won't do that again. Uh, but I imagined for a moment that let us suppose a, um, a similar attempt had been made with the printed copy, which would have required breaking into people's homes and pulling books off the shelves and so on. This would have been obviously uh, illegal. Uh, and so the fact that they could do this in the digital medium uh, alarmed me. So now let's come back to this question of the right to be forgotten. Uh, at Google, we have tried to uh, execute the requirements of the European Court of Justice. And so we allow people to send in requests to remove things from the index which we create when we crawl through the World Wide Web. Now, I want to draw your attention to the peculiarity of this idea. We're asked, and others are asked, who do search engines, to build the index and then remember everything we're supposed to forget. Because we have to remember to remove something from the index. It doesn't remove it from the web. It only removes it from the index. Now, this is an example of executing something out of convenience. Let's get it out of the index because we know who makes the index. We don't know exactly necessarily where the web pages are physically housed. We know where they logically are housed because that's how the index points to them with, with hyperlinks. But a hyperlink doesn't necessarily tell you that this object is in San Francisco, California, north, uh, you know, uh, north of the bay. Uh, so the even if we agree that this right to be forgotten is important, there is, first of all, this peculiarity that what is being forgotten is the index as opposed to the actual content being removed from the web, which would remove it from the index, too, because the index gets uh, recomputed. But there is this other side. What about the right of people to know? And so now we get into this other question of what was the motivation for asking that something be removed from the web, or in this case, removed from the index? And maybe it was embarrassing, but what if you were a politician? What if it was important for the electorate to know something about uh, you as a, as a politician? Uh, and there may be many other reasons why some of this information could be important for the public to be aware of. So there's some real tension and complexity in this proposition. Uh, at present, um, we try, and I guess others do, to try to follow the rules. But I have to say that it has its great complications, and I'm still very conflicted about the uh, wisdom of this particular rule.